Hi guys, this is Vice from Vice IAS. We are continuing the history NCRT series, class 6. Next is chapter 5. We have done the Stone Age, we have done the uh, Indus Valley Civilization, and next is obviously the Rig Vedic period. Okay, so chronology, I am trying to make you familiarize with the things. Later, later, we will see a lot of data in class 7, 8, 9, and up till class 12. So, try to make notes individually for each of these topics, not in one single book. Okay, don't write a class 6 and make a notebook. Make a proper set of pages for Rig Vedic, another set of pages for Indus Valley Civilization. Or digitally, if you are doing in Excel sheet, have different different tabs for each thing. That is how I do it. And add to it. Whenever you learn new things or get a new MCQ, get a new mains question, add data to that particular page. So don't go and start filling in class 6 book also, class 7 book also. Don't make notes like that at all. Okay. And also another thing, don't make notes based on date like uh, 6th June, this is the current affair, next 7th June, this is the current affair, not like that. When you learn a topic, make note for topic wise. Like today, some judicial overreach, some news is there, then make a, take a fresh page, write judicial overreach, write uh, case number one, example, or some IPC sections or some constitutional reforms, uh, sorry, provisions related to it, write that thing. Then next item, if you are reading the same day, like suppose uh, uh, some medical, rate, some uh, GM must start something is reading, don't write it just below that uh, judicial overreach thing, okay? Write that in a fresh page for uh, this uh, biotechnology concepts. Then next day or after one week you are reading some other case which is some judicial activism or judicial overreach, maybe the national anthem issue or something, read that, uh, sorry, write that below that other case. So that is how you should make notes, not like uh, June 6th I have a page, June 7th I have a page, you will not be able to revise and it's of no use also. It's just like showing others like, okay, I made notes for June 5, I made a June note for June 6th. It's not a target to complete maximum notes like that, okay. Topic wise, segregate it and then your revision will be perfect. So do it for all subjects, okay, it's a, it applies to all subjects. Now let's begin. Book names, or sorry, chapter name they are giving, what books and burials tell us. But uh, we are dealing mainly with the Rigveda here, okay, Rigvedic period, that is after the Indus Valley Civilization. So you, have may, you may heard about the Vedas, you know, Rigveda, Samveda, Yajurveda and Atharva Veda. Last two, three years questions are not coming, but uh, like about the Vedas, I am telling in specific. Else they used to ask like uh, something they will give and ask like whether it was picked up from Rigveda, like the, uh, I am not able to remember questions, but there were certain things, like they will give some sloka or some quote or something. And they'll tell like whether it was taken from this particular Veda, okay, or whether medicines are related to which one, music is related to which one. Each Veda has a different meaning, okay, we learn it in subsequent classes. The oldest Veda is Rig Veda, composed of 3500, sorry, composed about 3500 years ago. It has a lot of this hymns, okay, so it's actually called as Sukta or which means well said, okay, so well said hymns were there in this particular Rig Veda. So Sukta, when you hear next time, you should know what it is. These hymns are in praise of various gods and go goddesses. Three gods especially, that is Agni, that for fire, Indra, warrior god, and Soma, that is for this uh, wine kind of thing. You can tell a special drink, special drink which was prepared. So Agni, Indra, and Soma, that is what all mentioned in the Rigvedic period. Don't confuse with the other later gods which we learn, okay? So each, uh, each age you should know what is specific to that age. These hymns were composed of sages, composed by sages, Rishis, you can tell, and uh, please taught students to recite and memorize each syllable, uh, syllable, word, sentence, uh, bit by bit. So students were mandatorily learning all these things. Still now it is good society. There is no religion involving. There is no uh, fighting caste issues or any other problems. We'll see. It was actually a good society. Okay, a Rigvedic society, old Vedic Sanskrit society. You can tell. Okay, which is different from the Sanskrit you learn in school these days. So the Vedic Sanskrit is different and it is more sophisticated than what you learn today. Okay, here again uh, they are telling about the uh, relations between different languages. If you see this uh, Matra in Sanskrit, Ma in Hindi and Mother in English, everything is same, right? Similar, right? So they are telling about the interrelation and different different types of languages. I think uh, they would be giving this name also, yeah, Indo-European. Okay, Sanskrit is a part of Indo-European and all these popular languages which you know, it's about, it's actually Indo-European only. Even this Persian, English, French, they are telling all these are belonging to Indo-European. Then we have different other languages that is uh, Indo, Tibet, sorry, Tibeto Burman, okay, Tibeto Burman family, which is the Northeast people's language is there. Then Tamil, Telugu, Kanda, Malayalam, the South Indian languages, it belongs to the Dravidian family. Then uh, in Jharkhand and all, there one language is there, Astro Asiatic family. Few months back, uh, this was in news because of uh, discovery of one uh, particular language. Try to find out that current affairs. If you know it, share it in comment section so that others also will know. Uh, it, it is very important because it's in news. Try to tell why was that a controversy or what was that issue uh, about a particular new language. Okay, so Astro-Asiatic, Tibeto-Burban, uh, 
what is the other one indo european and dravidian four types of language families you can type the books we use are written and printed obviously the rigveda that time they used to recite and people the students used to hear and that is later uh, originally it was not written down okay it was just uh, oral thing later after 200 years of that only they had the first uh, what to say not actually printed version you can tell but the uh, uh, written down format okay it was written down several centuries after that and printed recently only 200 years ago so why historians study the rigveda some of the hymns in the rigveda are in the form of dialogues okay that we we'll see the story of vishwamitra if you know it's actually he, it's like he is talking to two rivers okay bias and satlets maybe you pc can ask these kind of things vishwamitra we are talking to two rivers and that is what is it's written in that way okay that uh, whole rigveda is written like a communication between these uh, people vishwamitra and bias and satlets as rivers so it was worshiped as goddess so that is also information they get that rivers were also treated as goddess so this is a manuscript from that manuscript means handwritten okay manu in latin means hand that is why manuscript means handwritten so this i think is found on birch bark found in kashmir 150 years ago text of the rigveda english translation is now available in library okay maharashtra not important now this is that reverse thing not very important for you to read but again there if you see the starting like four rivers four sisters like that he is addressing the rivers and telling some things okay about uh, indra is there then that uh, agni soma and all which is saw okay then uh, they also i think chariots is mentioned so they are telling they were aware of the chariots okay chariot word is mentioned in the speech in rigveda so chariots they were aware ganga and yamuna are named only once so obviously they are named so such things also you people sometimes tell like uh, whether rigveda mentions about ganga river and all because ganga is always there in the news so you should know then it's about cattle horses and chariots so here rigveda cattle children all these things horses so if you see here and all it's clearly mentioned about horses but in indus valley civilization we are still confused or we don't know so children chariots these are all known to them and uh, that's how now this cattle protection and all is also in news so you should know uh, battles were fought for land okay which is important for pasture for growing hardy crops that ripen quickly such as barley some battles were fought for water and to capture people so if you know they were having battles not like the indus valley civilization they had battles for different different reasons for crops land water and all those things performance of yajna okay yajna means sacrifice they had this thing and now we'll see about the society also slowly slowly it's very important question has been asked in mains as well as prelims so offerings were made to the fire in uh, old ramayana series and all you would have seen right this uh, yajnas by rishis uh, these were meant for gods and goddesses offerings could include ghee grain and in some cases animals also so animal sacrifice was there that is a statement you need to know animal sacrifice was there during rigvedic times most men took part in these wars there were no regular army no regular army but there were assemblies where people met and discussed matters of war and peace they also chose leaders who were often brave and skillful warriors okay so you should know this no regular army animal sacrifice was there then uh, words to describe family i think different terms you will learn again a uh, priest were called brahmins you know and who performed various rituals and the rajas rajas is actually a different concept in both the rigvedic and later vedic period here uh, rajas are not the ones which we feel uh, which we know now okay they did not have a capital city they did not have armies they did not collect tax okay they were just a, a leader kind of thing uh, participating in this uh, sacrifice uh, ceremonies and all generally sons did not automatically succeed father and mother so not hereditary also they did not have capital city they did not have army they did not collect tax okay everything is a no for rigvedic raja you can tell but animal sacrifices yes okay now uh, people people are described by jana okay now also we use jana right jana and vish vish is actually community okay jana vish from this only vaishya okay not her page name obviously it is vaishya community you will know that uh, uh, different things the brahmana vaishya shudra kshatriya that four things will be there which we will learn later so that is derived from the word vish which means vish means community and uh, uh, jana means uh, people okay so people community two more terms we learned bharata jana so you know that tribe right bharata jana puru jana yadu jana so they are telling lot of tribe names or group names jana is the people and this is the name of that people community now aryas 
they call themselves okay these people who compose these hymns they describe themselves as aryans so aryas that is the you know the people of that time who maybe came from outside india or that is still we don't know so that is aryas and they call their opponents as dasa or dasyus okay so this terminology when i am explaining try to understand it okay once or twice you hear it it will be there registered in your mind it will not go anywhere so don't worry so dasas dasyus were their opponents now people who did not perform sacrifices and probably spoke different languages that is this dasas or dasyus which are opponents of them now later this term slowly slowly changed its shape form meaning and all and it became like a slave kind of thing okay dasa you know dasa now it's called as the feminine dasi which came to be known as slave so that is how it evolved anyone who is opposing them aryans it became slaves now slaves were women and men who were often captured in war they were treated as property and who could they could make them do anything okay any work they wanted that is how dasa evolved slave system evolved so now if you see society is slowly slowly degrading while the rigveda was being composed in the northwest of subcontinent there were other development elsewhere so now we were talking about north india now we'll see what are happening in some other places okay so story of the megalith i told you megalith is something which comes later not during the actual uh, paleolith or uh, what was that mesolith and uh, third one was neolith after that only this megalith will come now big stone boulders that is the big stones with that structures will be made that is the megalith concept okay i'll show you a picture that will be more helpful for you so if you scroll down here this picture if you see it's considered as burial site or something in the center and they have guarded it like this okay and if you see here a hole is there that is for maybe offering something or maybe any other uh, uh, input kind of uh, area a window kind of thing they had this thing so that's also mentioned in this text okay that's why i'm just telling and uh, this type of megalith is also known as cist so you should know this term cist means this kind of megalithic structure okay port holes which i told which could be used as an entrance okay so this is cist megalith structure rest is not important that picture if you have seen that is more than enough there then here black and red wear again i think in the indus valley time also we saw this black red pottery and all so here also it is extended and here weapons of iron okay skeletons of horses horse equipment ornaments so this clearly rigvedic time there is no conflict about horse whether it was there or not but indus valley is the problem okay now these are like again pictures of this axes daggers and all those things which they use horse equipment okay all in the megalithic sites social differences this thing sometimes more objects are found in the grave okay that is something it's along with the belongings people were buried okay one skeleton was buried with 33 gold beads two stone beads four copper bangles one conch shell okay maybe some very famous personality of that day this much uh, precious metals and all these things are there along with his dead body okay so somewhere is somewhere poor, others poor some chiefs other followers so they telling all state of people burial sites were found okay then that port holes thing again they are telling okay bodies of those who died later were brought into the grave through the port holes maybe they used it for again and again uh, uh, this a uh, grave purpose okay they may have used it there is nothing much here ima enam gao i think i showed you in the previous uh, uh, chapter also about uh, the importance of it it is uh, at the site the river god is there which is a tribute of bhima which is again a tribute of krishna okay tributes are important in geography aspect you should know krishna bhima god now occupied uh, this uh, timeline not important then uh, adults were generally buried in the ground laid out straight and head towards the north okay so this is one unique feature about this particular special burial site at inam gao which is in maharashtra it's an old village i have showed you in the map in chapter 2 so here that dead bodies like they're telling head towards the north and uh, burials within the houses were found vessels that probably contain food and water were placed with the dead okay so that kind of burial was a big ceremony kind of thing for them they had done lot of things one man was found buried in a large four legged clay jar in the courtyard of a five room house so again inside the house a, a burial site was found everything in inam gao okay skeletal studies so skeleton again they are telling one thing there is no means in science to find out whether it is a skeleton of a woman or a man okay and uh, maybe jewelry would help but the problem with these uh, uh, civilizations were they both men and women used to wear jewelry so they could not understand whether it is a uh, man or a woman that is one thing still some hip area something and all they are telling and uh, they used to identify 
then famous patient named Charaka. Charaka, one name. Again, in the future, we learn a lot of people names like Aryabhatta will be there, uh, Kalidasa will be there, where different kings gave patronage and all. So try to remember. He actually told like 360 bones are there in the body, okay? We know like only 206 bones are there now. But actually, it is telling he is he counted even the teeth, joints, cartilage and all. That is why that much big number came. Occupations in Inamgao. So Inamgao, they have given a lot of details. So obviously, history optional. Maybe this location will come every year. Seeds of wheat, barley, rich, uh, sorry, rice, pulses, millets, peas, sesame, bones of number of animals are there, uh, cut marks, cattle, buffalo, goat, sheep. So if you see, almost everything is there. Okay, black buck, antelope, hair, black black buck is in news. Try to find out why. Then uh, fruits, bear. I saw, showed you last time also bear, amla, jamun, dates, berries. Okay, so whatever there, there was an Indus Valley civilization that along with lot more things. Elsewhere at this time what was happening in China they are telling something was happening, uh, writings on animal bones, okay, not very important for us, I am just covering it because I saw it here. So kings lived in palaces in cities, so China also had their own civilization, okay, bronze vessels, during the Rigvedic time in China this was happening. Whether we have any good questions, try to match these columns, okay, Sukta, you know, well said, okay, I told you, Rigveda, Rigvedic text, okay, Sukta. Chariots, chariots are used in battles. Yajna is sacrifice. Dasa, slave. Dasa where? Dasa, Dasu is your opponents of uh, the Aryans. Okay. Megalith is the stone boulder and it's also called cyst. Okay. Here again timeline. Vedas about 3500 years ago. Megalith 3000 years ago. Inamgao again 3600 years ago. And Charaka 2000 years ago. So you should slowly slowly understand the timeline of the things that are happening. Okay. Fill the blanks not important. Okay. Anyway, you will know, you will be already remembering all these things. So, I will come up with the next video soon. Till then, thank you.